And now, wait, wait, did you throw the grenade? I don't know. It might be on my chest. It might be in your chest, Barney. I'm going to build a very simple scripted sequence with two Combine soldiers. I'll refer to the blue one as Barney B. I'll refer to the red one as Barney A. I have two AI relationships that ensure that the Combine soldiers are friendly to the player and that the Combine soldiers are friendly to each other. Technically, you don't need that second one because NPC Combines are friendly to each other by default. Here's a scripted sequence entity that I set up earlier and we're just gonna go over how it's set up before we add a second one. I set the name of the scripted sequence to be Barney A scripted and this is how I'm gonna refer to it from other entities. The target NPC refers to the entity that's going to take these actions. So in this case, it's gonna be Barney A. Scripted sequences have quite a few options that you can mess with. We're gonna focus on just the ones that you need in order to get one of these running. First, there's the entry animation. Once the NPC is in the position they're supposed to be for the scripted sequence, they're going to go into the entry animation. If there is no entry animation, it's just going to skip this step and go on to the action animation. The action animation is intended to be the main animation. This is the primary thing that you want the NPC to do. Optionally, once they are done the action animation, they can do a post-action idle animation. And this is the last step out of the three animations. And you can have the post-action idle animation just loop over and over again if you like. For this sequence, Barney A is going to perform a kick. Then he's going to panic because he thinks there's something on his back. And then he's going to deploy a man hack. If you open an entity in the model editor, you can see a list of all the animations that they can perform. And as soon as you pick a target NPC, you get a drop down of animations that you can choose from. You also have the option of having the NPC perform the action from where they are at that moment that is triggered, or you can have them move, walk, run, whatever you like, to the spot where you placed the scripted sequence. I'm going to add a second scripted sequence, and notice when you spawn one of these into the map, the direction that the shape tapers off to is the direction the NPC is gonna turn when they arrive at that position if you have the NPC walk to that position. So I'm gonna place this on the ground and flip it around to face the other scripted sequence. I'm using a similar naming scheme. So Barney B scripted is gonna be the name of the scripted sequence. It's gonna to apply to Barney B. I'm just gonna grab three randomish actions that I want him to perform as part of the sequence. You could be a ton more creative with this. I'm just throwing something together quick as an example. By default, the NPC is gonna to walk to the position of the scripted sequence. There are a variety of different methods you can use to trigger a scripted sequence. Here, I'm gonna use the same trigger I usually do. So once my player walks into this particular trigger, I'm gonna make sure that it sets off the scripted sequence for both of the NPCs. We'll use the on trigger output, which fires when someone walks through this trigger. The target entities are gonna be the name of the scripted sequences, and we use the begin sequence input to that entity to begin the scripted sequence. I'll have one trigger for each of the scripted sequences and also make sure that you make no mistakes here. If beside the on trigger there is this little symbol with a red cross through it, that means something didn't quite line up. So go back and make sure after you set that up that there is no red lines through that little symbol on the left side of on trigger. Everything looks good, so let's try it out. Here we are, my Barneys are all set. I'm gonna walk through the trigger and turn around and see if they're coming with me. So you can see they're leisurely walking to the spots and you should see their animations. There we go, so we got the kick. It looks like he's bouncing a basketball. They're both running through their animations, so all three of the animations before they're done. Kinda looks like Blue's having a bit of a trouble there. Now let's do that again, but this time I'm gonna throw a little wrench into the sequence. I'm actually gonna start shooting wildly and see if I can break them from their animations. Oh, 
Notice that the shooting acts as an interrupt so the NPCs don't finish their sequence. This is configurable though and I'll show you how to make sure that these things aren't interruptible. This can be a bit tricky if you don't know where to look. If you open the settings to the scripted sequence and then click on the spawn flags, you can find a no interruptions checkbox. There are other things you can do around this whole idea of interrupting, but just by checking this checkbox alone, gunfire will not interrupt a scripted sequence. I set up no interruptions on one of the scripted sequences and let's see how the NPCs behave now. While the gunfire clearly interrupts the blue NPC sequence, even shooting the red combine doesn't interrupt the sequence at all, he just ignores it. Now I'll go back and quickly set both of the scripted sequences to be non-interruptible. So I'm going to check that no interruption checkbox on both scripted sequences and then I'm going to try and interrupt them. Depending on what you're trying to achieve in your sequence, if it's a cutscene, you may want to interrupt it or not. You can also do some pretty complex things by chaining scripted sequences together. So here I have a total of five different scripted sequences. All of these involve Barney B. They'll also share a similar naming scheme. So basically one through five of Barney B scripted. First Barney is going to kick. I'm going to set this to repeatable and I'll show you why at the end. You can use the next script field to identify the following script, so the next script in the sequence. In this case, I'm going to use Barney B scripted 2, which is the next scripted sequence I want him to move to and act out. Here's the next scripted sequence, and I'm going to get him to freak out because he thinks there's a gas can on his back about to blow up. I'm also going to switch things up a bit and get him to run to the position instead of walk. Now in this one, I'm going to get him to duck. Again, most of the other settings are the same. And the next script is going to be the fourth script. There's going to be no interruptions and it's not going to be repeatable. Now here's the fourth script. I'm going to get him to throw a grenade in this case. In each of these sequences, we made the NPC walk to the next sequence. In this case, I'm going to set move to position no. As soon as the NPC is done sequence number four, he's going to move on to sequence number five, panicking because he thinks there's a grenade on his chest, but he's not going to move to the box. He's just going to do it in place. In this way, you can have any number of sequences, really one after the other without the NPC having to move, and you can put the boxes anywhere you want in your map. Finally, I'll get the NPC to walk back to the first scripted sequence. And because it's repeatable, the NPC will do it. If you don't have that repeatable checkbox checked, then it won't do the same sequence twice. So if you want him to do a series of things over and over again, you can set that repeatable so that the NPC can come back to that same spot and do it again. Here we go, Barney. It's your time to shine. I want you to come at this and I want you to show me your best kick. Big kick. Let's see it out there. Put that foot up. There you go. And now move on over here. And here's your motivation. There's something on your back. You don't know what's on your back. You gotta panic. Panic, Barney. There's something on your back. It's scary. It's, 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 you don't know. Oh, it's, it, it's gone. It's gone, Barney. The, the thing is gone. Let's move on. Now you're gonna come over here and, and you hear something. And I want you to duck, Barney. I want you to duck right now. Duck like you've never ducked before. All right, good job. You're done ducking. Now, yeah, that was a nice little move right there. Move over here and throw that grenade. 
throw it far, throw it as far as you can right now. Get that grenade out. And now wait, wait, did you throw the grenade? I don't know, it might be on my chest. It might be in your chest, Barney. Oh no, you know what? Oh, it's gone, don't worry. It's not on your chest, you can settle down. Now move back to the beginning and let's end things off with one more big kick. Kick. There you go, well done. If you enjoyed that short look at scripted sequences, why not subscribe, like, comment, let me know what features of the workshop tools you'd like me to look at next. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.